August 14, 2020, New Jersey Pine Lands Commission meeting. I'm calling the meeting to order. Would Deputy Attorney General Miles please read the open public meeting statement? Good morning, commissioners, staff, members of the public. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Pinelands Commission was given in compliance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act by providing notice to all municipal and county clerks within the Pinelands area and to the Secretary of State on August 6, 2020, and to the Commission's officially designated newspapers on August 6, 2020, and by posting a copy on the Commission's website. Thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Uh, would the Executive Director please now call the roll? Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioner Avery? Here. Commissioner Christie? Here. Commissioner Erlin? I'm here. All right. Commissioner Howell? Here. Commissioner Eirick? Here. Commissioner Janarone? Commissioner Lloyd? Here. Commissioner Lovauer? Here. Commissioner Pikaliski? Here. Commissioner Quinn? Commissioner Rowan Green? Chairman Frickett? Present. Thank you, Nancy. Now for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the Republic, to the Republic for which, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, Nancy, um, could you tell us which staff members are attending today's meeting? Uh, sure. Susan Grogan, Evan Bossett, uh, Ernie Demon, Stacey Roth, Jessica Noble, Chuck Horner. Who am I not seeing? Jessica Lynch. Did I miss anybody? Paul. Paul, I'm looking. I'm looking right at you, Paul. We always <laughs> miss Paul. He's right in front of us. All I right. just snuck away for a moment. <laughs> All right, thank you, Nancy. Yep. Craig Ambrose from the governor's office is on the phone today. Good morning, Craig. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Nice to hear your voice. I'm having a hard time remembering what you look like, though. So I <laughs> Likewise, likewise. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a motion to adopt the July 10, 2020 commission meeting minutes? So moved, Chairman. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? I'll second, Erlen. Thank you, Sean. Okay, are there, uh, I'd like to first thank uh, Jessica Nova for preparing the minutes. Um, are there any questions or comments on the minutes? No. Okay, no questions or comments. Uh, all in favor of adopting the July 10th, 2020 minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Uh, before reports are presented, I would like to point out to the public that in order to participate in public comment today, you must call in and provide the meeting ID, which is at the top of the agenda and also on the screen. We look forward uh, from we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, um, before um, we have our um, our executive director reports, I'd like to ask Commissioner Lloyd um, to talk a little bit about John Stokes, uh, executive director of the uh, Pine Man for many years. And um, could you say a few words about John? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, we've lost another champion of the Pinelands this summer. It's been a rough summer. Um, there were John Stokes, uh, was dedicated to the protection of the Pinelands, as I think most of the people on the call know. He served on the staff for over 30 years and always sought to enhance the preservations of the resources of the Pinelands. There was a there was a toast to Mr. Stokes about a week ago, um, and I couldn't join because of internet. I think a number of people had that concern. So frankly, I wanted to put a few words on the record today uh, in honor and remembrance of, of John. Um, it, to Linda, his wife, Dan, the Stokes family, and all of us who are grieving, um, I offer my deepest condolences. John was a passionate and effective leader of both the staff and, frankly, of the commission in our efforts to enhance the value of the finalists in every action that we undertook. 
he set very high standards for himself, for the staff, and even for the commission. In fulfilling our mandate to protect and preserve the Pinelands, he took personal responsibility when, for whatever reason, he could not develop a broad consensus on every issue that came before the commission. In his annual self-evaluations, he felt that it was his responsibility when he could not convince all commissioners to join in a given action. He somehow, in my view, unnecessarily shouldered the burden of trying to ensure that every commissioner supported every decision we made, as all of you know, an impossible task, yet one that John bravely took on. Leaders like that are a rare commodity, and we miss John's leadership. John led the way on, on far too many Pinelands initiatives for me to begin to calculate this morning. I want to mention one. John led the Commission's efforts to approve the construction of a power line in the Pinelands along the Garden State Parkway. In order to ensure that the action included provisions guaranteeing an equivalent level of protection of the Pinelands, John negotiated a mitigation package that made a $13 million contribution to the Pinelands Conservation Fund to preserve, preserve land in the pines. That agreement led to the preservation of hundreds, if not thousands of acres of lands in the pines. John's legacy that on his watch, he devoted every ounce of energy to make the Pinelands a better place, environmentally and economically. Thank you, John. Thank you, to Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Uh, are there any other comments at this time um, for uh, Mr. Um, Executive Director Stokes? Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, Alan. Uh, I also had problems trying to get into the toast to John, so I toasted him with a Guinness at the appropriate hour, which is <laughs> something we used to do at the at Braddock's for many years. Uh, I've known, I knew John from, I guess, the day he started as, at the commission. I was on the commission then, but uh, for m much of his career, I was a member. Uh, he was, as I said in my comments before in, the, the, in our statement, there are a few people that have done more for Pinelands preservation, either as a staff person or as the executive director. Um, as Ed pointed out on, on one instance, I, I, will, I will remind the commissioners that when the plan was first adopted, one of the biggest issues was the conformance of all the towns. And as you might believe that they were some contentious negotiations. And John did a lot of those and he did them so well that uh, that eventually all of our towns are now fully in compliance with the plan. That was a, he was a talented negotiator. Uh, and he always, as Ed said, looked out for the interest of the Pinelands Commission and the, and the Pinelands themselves. I will miss John. I continued to have, uh, get together with him for lunch at Braddock. So after I rejoined the commission, talk about Pinelands and old times and this and that. In fact, the last time I, I spoke with him, I texted him, and it turned out it was his 70th birthday. I said, if this COVID thing ever ends, let's get back together. And he was going to celebrate with his wife, Linda. So I, I hope that uh, that was a good celebration. I'll miss him. He was my friend, and he was a colleague and uh, did great work for the Pine Lands Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Avery. Mr. Um, Chairman, may, yes. May I add a comment? Uh, Certainly, I, 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 Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I did not have the good fortune of getting to work with John uh, when he was the executive director. But when I came on to the commission nine years ago, I reached out to many people uh, for advice. And John was one of those who returned my call and met with me and was very gracious uh, with his time very helpful with his advice. And in the years following, when there would be uh, contentious issues uh, on the commission, I would often uh, reach out to John and uh, look for his guidance. And he was always uh, very gracious and, and very helpful and would provide me with great insights. So I too 
uh, honor his memory. I'm grateful for the service that he provided to the Pinelands, not just while he was executive director, but even years after he, he remained committed and passionate uh, about preservation of the Pinelands. And I'm very grateful to him for that. Thank you, Chairman. You're welcome. Um, although I did not know um, Executive Director Stokes well, um, I saw him a number of times at uh, elected official presentation, newly elected official presentation, and a few other times. And I always thought he was a, a powerful and had a presence, powerful leader and had a presence and care about the Pinelands. And uh, I have a feeling uh, after hearing the comments today and also uh, from reading other documents that he really pulled the commission through a lot of very difficult times and uh, for, uh, for doing those things. So uh, with that, um, Maybe we can have a moment of silence for John. Um, okay, thank you. Um, there were no uh, committee meetings since the last commission meeting. Um, so uh, we'll start off with staff reports and the executive director's report. Great, thank you. Um, so our monthly COVID update, um, we continue to mostly work from home as we have been, maybe a slight loosening up on people coming to the office to pick files up, but not much. Um, our facilities guys, indoor and outdoor, are back at work three days a week, so that's good. Um, a lot of catching up to do there for them. And then we're, you know, catching up with the uh, maintenance and then the storm hit, um, which compounded our working and our facilities management because now we have debris everywhere that we're slowly cleaning up. And then in terms of work that day, significant amount of staff had no power. There was power at the commission, but simultaneously an internet router switch went out. So we were just completely, you, couldn't, you could not win no matter where you went. So it was a rough couple of days. Um, I will acknowledge that staff continues to be unsettled, want answers, they're worried about the budget, they're worried about when we're going to go back to work, if we're going back to work. Um, and mm -hmm. I, on a fairly regular basis, speak to groups or single people and have to continuously tell them, I don't know. Um, it's very frustrating. So we, we trot along, work is good. People are, are working hard um, and that's all good. Then the other thing I wanted to report, um, I guess it was the last commission meeting, maybe the one, probably the last commission mm -hmm. meeting, where um, I had shared all the um, IR reports from New Jersey Natural Gas. And then I believe it was PPA did uh, probably um, an OPA request from DEP on the matter, the pipeline in general, and DEP had a report for a return that we did not have a report for that occurred in the Pinelands. Um, we immediately reached out to New Jersey Gas. They acknowledged that that incident did occur, that they reported it to DEP. Um, and then that was sort of at staff level. And then I sent a letter higher up saying that, you know, asking for answers, do an investigation, tell me what happened. And I got the letter back. Um, and yeah, they forgot to send it to us. They reported it to DEP. So it wasn't like they kept it a secret, but they never sent us the report. Um, they did investigate the matter. It was a site where they had, it, if, you, if you read the reports, it started the earliest site. It was that same site. They went back there. They had something left to do there and it happened again at that site. So um, I wanted to make you aware of that. And other than that, that is all I have to report. Nancy, there was one other thing that I thought maybe you would comment on and that was the emergency authorization for the um, renovation of the Monroe Township Firehouse? I'm not sure if it was on Chuck's list. Chuck, was that on your list? It was. It's on Chuck's okay. list. <laughs> I, since you asked me, since you brought it to my attention, I just wanted to okay. well, see if you had uh, anything to say about it. But we can wait for Chuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Chuck, um, good morning. Um, and thank you, Executive Director. Uh, maybe before we get to Chuck, let me ask if uh, any commissioners have questions for the Executive Director. Chairman, okay. I do. If I okay. May. okay. Um, it, 
the chairman, the, the executive director was kind enough to respond to a series of questions I had submitted with regard to those uh, five incidents of spills and now six that we're learning. And uh, I, I received the responses yesterday. Thank you, Nancy, for those. Um, I, I did have a, a concern about the response to one. The, the last question I asked was, did we consider suspending their permit? Was consideration given to presenting this information to the commissioners at the time these spills were happening? And the response that was given was, we did not consider suspending the permit or presenting the information to the commissioners. The approval recognizes the possibility of bentonite releases and includes provisions regarding what is to be done when one occurs. The applicant was in compliance with the terms of their approval regarding IRs, which is short for inadvertent returns. Um, I, I have a problem with that response because frankly, I look at these five spills that occurred within a span of 10 days uh, this was not inadvertent. This, this was a matter of course uh, for the, the horizontal drilling procedure. This is not at all what we were told by the applicant would happen when they were uh, first seeking the permit for this process. And we were led to believe that the spills would not occur, but should they occur, they would not be serious. A procedure would be followed to uh, make sure they were stopped immediately and then prevented. This actual history is quite different. And now we learned that there was a six spill. I don't know whether that six spill occurred within the same 10 day period, but if it is, that's more than one every other day. Yeah, this is concerning to me. I do believe this should have been reported to us commissioners uh, during the meeting and consideration should have been given to suspending the permit. All in all, I understand there were 14 uh, spills, the, the five or six uh, that we know about in the pine lands, uh, and then others uh, throughout the length of this uh, project. This was a serious problem. And again, not at all what was represented to us. I do recall Commissioner Jackson asking questions about bentonite and being concerned about the possible impacts of bentonite releases uh, into our uh, groundwater into our surface water and onto our uh, uh, plants. Uh, you know, I, I, I do believe that had we been made aware of this when this was occurring a year and a half ago, that we might have responded differently uh, to this than the staff did. I know I feel differently about it and would have asked that we consider suspending the permit at the time. So I, I continue to have an objection of, about this and uh, uh, I'm not pleased with the way that uh, was dealt with. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, but, but, but can I respond, please? Certainly, yeah. Um, and I understand that, and I knew you weren't going to be happy about it, but it was permitted. And you may not have liked that either, but, you know, sometimes from our perspective, they did what, they, what their permit told them to do. We allowed them to do it in the permit. And, I mean, we didn't encourage it, but it, we set up for it to happen. So there was an expectation that it could happen. You know, we also set up for the expectation that there could be an unexploded ordinance. And then there was that too. I mean, that they found one of those as part of this whole run. It was, it was a lot of activity going on. So, and when I say that you asked if we considered it and I said, we didn't, but I did. I mean, I thought about it. It's not like I didn't consider it. I just, I thought about it. I said, well, they complied with the permit. You know, it happened over a quick couple of days and then, you know, that was that. We did other things during that time. Um, we went out to the site. I called New Jersey Natural Gas into the office. We talked to them about it. What happened? Why did it happen? Um, so it's not like we didn't do anything. We didn't notify the commission and we didn't suspend the permit, but I'm not sure. I'm looking at Stacy, even if we wanted to, if we could have suspend a permit. But we didn't consider it, no, because they were compliant. I'll just say again that we anticipated an exceptional circumstance. This instead appears to me to have been the routine. Routine. I mean, it, it wasn't. It was in one stretch and things were tricky there. And then once they were out of that stretch, it never happened again. But okay. yes, I, I, I completely understand your position. Okay, thank you. Um, Stacy, were you going to say something? No, that's okay. Nancy took care of it. Okay, good. 
Anyone else? All right. Um, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, uh, Mark. Um, now, Chuck, Chuck's up. How are you today? Good morning, uh, Mr. Horner. Uh, good morning, commissioners and members of the public. Uh, I just had three items that I wanted to, to mention of general interest to the commission. Uh, the first one concerns an emergency authorization uh, that the staff issued after consultation uh, with the chairman of the Pinelands Commission. That authorization, which the commission does from time to time uh, to address matters of public safety, uh, authorized a township fire company in Monroe uh, to begin construction of a 4,500 square foot addition to their fire company. Uh, the staff had been working very closely uh, with, the, with the Monroe Township officials on this matter. Uh, they had begun to demolish a portion of the building a few months ago, that, and that did not require application to the Pinelands Commission. They were doing renovations to the interior of a portion of the building, and now they had run up against a time frame where they felt that uh, if they did not begin construction of their addition, uh, that exposing their emergency equipment vehicles, equipment and vehicles uh, to the elements in the winter would be a public safety matter um, based on those reasons. Um, and as I mentioned, the executive director after consultation with the chairman issued a letter allowing uh, Monroe Township to begin construction of that addition. It's for the Cecil Fire Company and uh, their application uh, is complete and it's on today's agenda for public comment. The second matter I just wanted to mention an update. Uh, we did receive an application I've mentioned before that Pemberton Township would like to extend public sanitary sewer out to two existing public schools uh, located on Fort Dix Road just before the entrance to the base. Uh, the proposed sanitary sewer lines a majority of them will be located in an agricultural production area where they are not a permitted land use unless to serve a identified public health hazard issue. Uh, we did issue a letter back to Pemberton Township a couple of weeks ago asking them to provide us some information on the uh, public health issue that has been that is going to be addressed by those public sanitary sewer mains. If the application is complete, ultimately it will come to the Pinelands Commission at one of their monthly meetings for review and a vote. And the last item I wanted to mention, uh, which has been, I think will be good news that the commission issued a certificate of filing for the Chatsworth Volunteer Fire Company uh, to erect a communications tower that's accessory to the Volunteer Fire Company. Uh, that the township has been looking forward to that moment for a long time. Uh, that the tower will provide enhanced communications uh, to all the emergency services uh, in the, from the Chatsworth Volunteer Fire Company and a secondary uh, benefit uh, may be an improvement in cell phone coverage in that general area of the Pinelands. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, um, Chuck. Are there any questions for uh, Chuck? Yeah, I just have one question. Um, with the Monroe Township application, uh, so just so I, I'm clear on you, we gave the we gave the approval to start construction before it was approved by the board, right? Is that what we're saying? That that is correct, Commissioner. There's a provision in the uh, in our regulations that authorizes the executive director, after consultation with the chairman of the commission, to take any action that's necessary to eliminate a public health hazard, emergency, or public safety problem. That does not for eliminate the need for any follow-up action that if an application has to be completed with the Pinelands Commission, which in this case, Monroe Township is completing that application. It just allows them to start construction immediately. Okay, uh, just was there any um, communication to the board that they were making this approval? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I'm sorry. Could um, could you ask that what, question again? I asked if there was a communication to the board that this approval was done, um, so we were aware of it. Uh, I I don't believe so. The uh, the way the regulation is written is the commission's executive director has to consult with the chairman of the Pinelands Commission, 
and the chairman of the Pinelands Commission uh, has to agree with that determination. That part of it did in fact happen. Okay, Commissioner Christie, I will make sure that the full commission is notified after, if we have another uh, emergency authorization. Um, I believe this is the third um, that I'm aware of. Um, in this situation, I was concerned about fire trucks being out in the freezing weather. I didn't know how long it would take to put this addition up. And I know fire trucks are expensive and uh, they're, they're loaded with water if they're poppers. And so that was my opinion. And uh, I asked if uh, staff had, uh, had, had, had supported this, uh, had, had reviewed and, and determined that it was a uh, adequate a application. And after, uh, after that, I agreed to the emergency authorization. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. I appreciate your um, your question about that, and I agree. I think the full commission could be aware of emergency authorizations. Any other questions for Chuck? Okay, thank you, Chuck. Uh, Susan, you, I'm sure you have a report today. I do. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Just a couple of things. Um, uh, you'll recall we've spoken before about um, our grant application to the New Jersey Historic Trust for uh, money to paint and maintain Fenwick Manor. Um, we had a site visit scheduled with the New Jersey Historic Trust staff um, twice now. It's been canceled once because of a storm and then yesterday because of other issues. But they have rescheduled for the end of this month. That's a, a required step in the grant process. So we are still hopeful about that. We'll have our site visit. They'll, they'll both look at the exterior and interior of Fenwick Manor, I believe. And hopefully we are still on track for uh, decisions to be made on the grant applications in September or October. So I'm hoping it won't be too long before we have good news on that. Good. Um, with the end of the fiscal year, that brings with it a number of reporting obligations, uh, annual reports that we're busily working on. So you'll be seeing those shortly. One is on our annual septic uh, pilot program. Uh, so you'll be seeing that as well as the Pineland Savant Credit Bank is obligated to do an annual report by the end of this month. So we'll be sharing that with all of you shortly, as well as we are busily working on our annual update on uh, permit land in the Pylons area. So you'll be seeing that. Um, just as a preview, DEP has made some significant acquisitions in the Pylons area over the past year. Uh, so we'll have some good information to share with you soon on that, perhaps next month. Um, we are making progress on some of our rulemaking efforts. You're aware of the proposed septic pilot program rules. They have been published in the New Jersey Register. That's an important step that starts the formal process. So we're uh, in the midst of the 60 day public comment period right now. We have a virtual public hearing scheduled for September 2nd. So that would be the next step. Um, and in terms of other rules, we are making, I would say, significant progress uh, on the uh, stormwater amendments that uh, the commission will need to consider largely in response to um, DEP's recent stormwater regulations. So I expect we will have um, some recommendations for the P&I committee to look at, uh, not this month, but um, fairly soon. And, uh, and then we'll do a lot of coordination with our municipalities, some of whom are a little anxious to understand how um, all this relates to what they have to do outside the Pinelands area and what they need to do inside the Pinelands area in terms of stormwater plans and ordinances. So we do need to move that forward. Um, and the only other thing I want to mention, so it's interesting, uh, the Barnegat Bay Partnership received funding from DEP, significant grant funding to do two, um, what they're calling watershed protection and restoration plans um, that affect the Pinelands area for, um, so the watersheds in this case that are involved are the Tom's River watershed and then also Oyster Creek, um, Cedar Creek and the Forked River watersheds. Uh, they're just getting started with those efforts, um, trying to schedule meetings, kickoff meetings of stakeholders. Um, and it, it, so we will participate as a stakeholder in both of those efforts. 
And uh, it was interesting that we received notice of this, uh, the beginning of these, this planning effort when they uh, sent us uh, surveys to fill out. They're struggling, as you might imagine, to figure out how to hold uh, stakeholder meetings, large groups of people during these times. Um, so there were a lot of questions. I'd never seen one like this before, but there were a lot of questions like, you know, are you comfortable having a meeting outside? Are you comfortable sitting on bleachers? Are you comfortable if the meeting is not covered from the elements, all that kind of thing. It's just a whole new challenge these days, trying to, um, to schedule and plan for public events like this. So um, anyway, we'll be keeping an eye on those efforts and, and reporting back to you on them and how they might affect the Pinelands area. I think they'll be interesting to follow. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Commissioners, do you have any questions for uh, Director Grogan? Ms. Chairman, I, this is Alan. I do have, what type of activities are they looking to perform, Susan? Well, I really don't know. That's why I think we're, we're going to keep a close eye on it. I mean, the, the, um, the wording they're using would imply that they're going to be producing you know, actual planning documents, whether that means um, recommendations for, um, you know, further studies or research or um, land use. I, I really don't know. Land acquisition, preservation, I'm not sure. It could be a whole range of things. So um, we are going to try and get our hands on their actual grant application so that we can see a little more in detail what's envisioned. Um, but I'll have to get back to you on that when we find out more. I'd, li I'd like to see the scope when mm -hmm. you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Susan, I have a question about the uh, corporate Cohancy rules. Uh, you mentioned them, I think, at the last commission meeting, and I was wondering if there's been more progress uh, since the last time. We have made some progress. We have um, a second draft, I guess I would call it, of the proposed, um, uh, proposed amendments, and we have a number of issues still and questions that we're working our way through. Um, they are pretty complicated, um, both in terms of writing the rules and then um, making sure that we understand how they would be implemented um, by the staff largely and um, how we would deal with applications and applicants and the need to hire experts perhaps and um, escrows and all of that. So there's a practical part of things too that we're trying to work through to make mm -hmm. sure everything um, you know, is, is feasible. Uh, but we do have an updated draft uh, and I expect that um, that'll be coming to the p &I committee fairly soon as well. So you'll be having some busy meetings. Has, have you been able to uh, uh, reach out or have you had a need to reach out to Larry Liggett? Uh, he seems to be, you know, uh, perhaps the architect of um, these rules uh, or the concepts anyway behind them. Have, have we needed uh, Larry's help? I'm sure we uh, have. Not so far. I have spoken to Larry recently, I, um, but other than that, not about that, not about the rules. No, um, no. So far, I think um, the the rules as drafted, uh, you know, pretty well follow the, the ideas and concepts that he's had. Um, they just flesh those out a little bit and put them into regulatory language. So, so far, we haven't needed to, to reach out to him to discuss the rules in particular, but, um, but he is interested in following along. And so yeah. we'll be keeping him informed. All right, that's good to hear. Thank you, Susan. Uh, now for uh, Stacy, do you have any updates on legislative matters, or legal matters? Or... Are you a mute? I'm no, not I anymore. <laughs> I have some updates with regard to litigation. First, I want to thank all of you, com the commissioners, for uh, diligently filing your financial disclosure forms. Financial disclosure season is over. And um, we are in good shape, so thank you. I'm sorry if you got a few too many reminders, but I appreciate your diligence. Um, secondly, I wanted you to be aware, um, I mentioned at the last commission meeting that the New Jersey Sierra Club had submitted a request um, to renew its stay request before the commission and that um, we had sent back a letter and said that the that issue was moot because all of the major construction within the Pinelands was complete, including all of the HDD. On July 17th, Sierra Club filed a motion with the appellate division seeking to obtain a stay of the commission's approval and also to supplement the record. Um, we filed an opposition brief to that, again, arguing because it was moot and the um, appellate division denied that motion on um, August 6th. Uh, denied Sierra Club's motion on August 6th, both to stay 
and also to supplement the record. And just for everyone, in terms of the status of that litigation, the substantive briefing on that litigation is completely done. Uh, we've been waiting for quite some time for the court to schedule oral argument. So um, my understanding is also that uh, Sierra filed um, stay requests with regard to their BPU appeal. I don't know what the status of that is. Um, just, a minor, just a minor update and clarification on that. Uh, it was Pinelands Preservation Alliance that filed in the BPU litigation on Sierra Club. Ah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Stacey, I had a question about the ethics. We just talked about the financial disclosure or ethics is coming up, ethics module or ethics um, uh, continuing learning credits um, are coming up, I guess, in the, um, uh, I don't know, in the fall. Normally, okay. um, under Executive Order 141, which was um, initially promulgated by Governor Cody, uh, that is the annual requirement that commissioners and uh, executive directors uh, take ethics training, um, and that is administered by the State Ethics Commission. They normally notify me in October, mm -hmm. and then I send out that information to you. Um, the reason that I don't want to get a jump on it is I don't know if this is going to be one of the years, I doubt it seriously, that they would do some sort of virtual live meeting. Mm -hmm. um, rather than using the modules, um, but I, I have not received notification yet as to how state ethics is going to require that requirement to be met. I know we have had a conversation about having a live um, um, ethics um, presentation, and I was uh, hoping, I mean, this would be a great format, great venue for such a presentation, I think. Um, is there anything... Else we can do anybody we can prod or push to... absolutely i can reach out to the executive director of the state ethics commission staff and see if he would be comfortable having um in person well virtual in person ethics training with you all um now that training would not be open to the public i know that they're not comfortable with that um because we have asked that before and we've had quorum issues so it does become a little um, interesting in terms of how we organize that, but I certainly can reach out to him and see whether or not they're there um, and how he would like to proceed. I think it was maybe three, four years ago, we did have um, uh, one of the uh, professionals from the FX uh, uh, group come and do a presentation. I, to be honest with you, Rick, I think that was a lot longer than three or four <laughs> years ago, in all honesty. Um, Margaret Katoa is now with the Division of <laughs> Law um, doing training there. So um, I would need to reach out to the new... Seems like just yesterday. Yeah, I think, we, I think there are already two uh, ethics trainers beyond her. She was fabulous. Um, but in any event, I will make the request and, and fill you in once I get information back from him. Thank you so much, Stacey. Uh, commissioners, any questions for... Uh... Uh, Stacy, Mr. Chairman, I have a, I have a couple questions for Stacy. Uh, we've recently got, uh, and Nancy, I appreciate you having Paul send out the newspaper articles more timely. Uh, some articles dealing with the state parks or, or park police uh, doing enforcement on uh, all-terrain vehicles. I think in Greenwood Forest. Yes. You had sent out a couple months ago a summary of a statute that was enacted. Is that a result of that statute? I honestly don't know, Commissioner Avery. Um, they, they certainly did um, take possession of 13 off-road vehicles in the course of uh, that weekend. Um, I don't know if it was a result of that legislation. I'd be happy to check and get back to you on that. Because it seemed to me that that... that filled in a loophole where they could impound and then charge uh, inappropriate riders or vehicles uh, misbehaving in the pylons. Just as an aside, there was an article in today's Asbury Park Press about a very serious accident where two, uh, two ATVs collided at the Heritage Minerals site. Now that's private property and they were trespassing, but um, still, uh, indicative of the fact uh, and one of the drivers was from Queens and the other one was from North Jersey so you know the, people are coming from all across the, the east coast to the pylons to uh, abuse their privilege I guess unfortunately 
Yeah. Um, I have not seen anything, Commissioner Avery, that that legislation actually passed, but I will follow up. I thought I thought it was passed. Okay, I'd like to know that because okay. that's a that's a tool that's lacking. I think for the for the parks, uh, the DEP folks that try and do enforcement. Um, the other question I have is related to the litigation. Yes. You know, when you, you say that the PPA uh, filed an appeal or the Sierra Club filed an appeal, they the Sierra Club doesn't have an in-house counsel, correct? They're 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 using firms to do this. Um, outside with, firms. Correct. Yeah. Both of them are. With regard to although PPA now does have some uh, have an attorney in-house. Okay. Um, but. New Jersey Natural, uh, excuse me, the New Jersey Natural Gas Appeal uh, filed by New Jersey Sierra Club, they are represented by the Eastern Environmental Law Clinic. Um, and if I, I sometimes get my gas appeal cases mixed up, my recollection, Christina, is that PPA with regard to its New Jersey Natural Gas Appeal is represented by Leah Dory. That's correct. Paul Leah Dory. Paul Leah Dory. In his office. Okay, I just just was curious if they that you know they had an in-house uh, department of law, if you will, or if or if they were relying on an outside counsel. No, they they use outside counsel. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you. Um, any other questions for uh, Stacy, um, commissioners? All right, Paul, your turn. Good morning. Good morning. So We've hosted 11 webinars since June, and they've generated a total of 2,795 views on YouTube thus far. So it's going well. We're getting uh, a lot of um, interest in them. Uh, yesterday, Edwin Growski of your staff delivered a comprehensive presentation on the impacts of climate change on the Pinelands. And last Thursday, Allegra Mitchell of Conserve Wildlife gave a highly informative talk on the effects of climate change on amphibians in New Jersey. Uh, I had the pleasure of hosting that talk. Uh, as Nancy had mentioned, many people lost their power. Fortunately, I was unaffected by the storm. So we had a plan in place for backup and it worked. Uh, these webinars, I feel, serve to inform the public about critically important issues such as climate change. And in fact, four of the talks have focused on climate change. Uh, I think the webinars also provide an invaluable platform for people to share their research and they help to keep the public engaged about the Pinelands and our efforts to protect it. We currently have weekly webinars scheduled through the end of September and we're finalizing the lineup of talks for October and beyond. Uh, in other news, uh, we've expanded our reach and our ability to communicate with the public exponentially during the past five months. Uh, we've placed a strong emphasis on bolstering our social media sites. We now have 6,403 followers on Facebook. We've added 563 followers on Instagram in only a few months. And our YouTube channel went from 30 subscribers in early March to its current total of 357. So we're pleased with the progress we've made thus far and we'll continue to identify creative ways to educate the public about our work. And that's my report. Thank you, Paul. Um, Commissioners, you have any questions for uh, Paul? Chairman, if I could, I'd just like to congratulate the executive director and uh, Paul for this tremendous webinar program. I've uh, participated in, in most of the, the webinars so far. I highly recommend them uh, to all of the commissioners. They're extremely well researched. They're presented with great graphics. Uh, the information is important. Uh, it's it's notable that uh, as much as I believe I know uh, about the Pinelands, I always come away with learning something new uh, when I watch these webinars. So um, uh, kudos for this great program. And again, hearty encouragement to, to my colleagues to to uh, watch these webinars, they're really terrific. Thank you, Commissioner Lubauer. Uh, any other questions for Paul? I too, as a um, retired educator um, who uh, taught about the Pinelands, um, and at the time that I was doing that, there was very little material out there. Well, computers weren't out there either, but um, at some point we did have computers and there still wasn't a lot of material uh, for educators to use, educate their students about the Pinelands. 
So I think these are, are so important, not only for um, uh, K through 12, to some extent, but also the college level. And um, I just wonder if there's a way to even reach out further um, to get educators using these programs to uh, get their students interested in the issues the commission faces and, and also the, um, their, their interest, their efforts at protecting and preserving the fine land. So uh, I'd like to thank you all and um, all the presenters that have participated in that and look forward to future uh, webcasts uh, and, um, and hope we're really making a difference there. And I think, I think we are. So thank you. And I'll thank Nancy as well for uh, encouraging, showing that leadership to um, educate the public. So um, any other questions for um, staff at this point? Okay, hearing none. Um, okay, now for uh, public development projects. Is there a motion to introduce the resolution with conditions approving Pemberton Township application uh, to pay 2,930 linear feet of three existing stone walking trails at the Nesbitt uh, Recreation Complex. So move, Chairman. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? I'll move it. Thank you, Bill. Uh, um, public comment was held during the July 10th meeting. No public comment was submitted to the commission regarding either, regarding the uh, application. Mm -hmm. Chuck, is there anything you'd like to uh, say about your report? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Horner? Basically, the, there's a stone walkway already there in uh, Cameron Township would like to pay Paved that stone walkway. Um, so, uh, okay, there's no questions at this point. All in favor of approving the resolution say aye. Aye. Uh, can you excuse me, Chairman? There are some people muted. Okay, we'll do that again. Thank Is you. Oh, all judge. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, sounds like it. Thank you. Unanimously. Uh, thank you, uh, Jessica. Uh, is there a motion to introduce the resolution with conditions approving the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection application for a change in use of a portion of the former Green Bank School in Washington Township? to offer space for the NJDEP and the application from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the installation of stream scour countermeasures to reduce erosion at the Mill Creek Bridge on Route 49 in Upper Township. So moved, Chairman. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? Second, okay, Christy. Uh, Dan, is that you? Yeah. Commissioner uh, Chrissy, thank you. Um, public comment was held during the July 10th meeting. No public comment was submitted to the commission regarding this application, uh, regarding this resolution, actually, both those applications. Um, Chuck, is there anything you would like to say about your report? I'll just summarize them very briefly, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the New Jersey Department of of uh, transportation is proposing to install around 4,900 square feet of what's referred to as concrete block around the abutment of an existing bridge. The block will be installed on the stream bank and within the stream, uh, it's to protect the, the bridge structure itself from erosion. That's one application. And the second application, uh, as you noted, is for from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to occupy a portion of the existing former Washington Green Bank Elementary School. With respect to that application, I did have one minor note that I wanted to make. Uh, when the report was issued, there's a condition number two in that report that indicates that 
Approval would be conditioned upon issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Um, in this instance, because it's a, a state agency uh, that will be occupying the building, that certificate of occupancy would be issued by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. In subsequent very involved discussions with the Department of Community Affairs, I was able to determine that actually a subsequent document that will be issued referred to as a certificate of approval by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs will actually be the document uh, that limits use of the 9,000 square feet of the building. I think that it's the equivalent of a certificate of occupancy. I would just ask that whether the commission would agree and I could put in the uh, cover letter if in fact the commission votes to approve this application that the commission would recognize a document issued by the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs known as a certificate of approval as the equivalent of a certificate of occupancy. But other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do any um, commissioners have any, any issue with uh, that interpretation of, uh, of uh, the report? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Any commissioners have questions of Director Warner? Yeah, this is a, uh, the the equivalency of the two certificates, is that something that's permitted under the CMP? Is that a discretionary call for us or uh, what are the implications of that? It, it is a discretionary call, Commissioner. It is something that we have used in the past to make sure that proposed development is consistent uh, with the Commission's regulations. From time to time, this arises when a use is served by an on-site septic system and the use of an existing building uh, needs to be limited in respect to office warehouse type uses and a certificate of occupancy is typically uh, a document issued by a municipal construction code official that we have used uh, throughout the entire Pinelands area. Uh, we use it, it, it is consistent with our regulations. Uh, it just so happened in this particular instance, the combination of a state agency applying uh, for the uh, internal res renovations of the school and the construction permits that were necessary for that. Uh, the Department of Community Affairs uh, would issue a certificate of approval that actually approves the architectural plans uh, that depicted the 9,000 square feet of the approximately, I think it's 24,000 square foot school that's going to be occupied. Chuck, I'm, I may I may misunderstand, but have we used a certificate of, of approval in place of a CO before? This will be the first time we've used a document known as a certificate of approval as the equivalent of a certificate of occupancy. I should note that our regulations don't uh, specifically address either document, Commissioner. So the, the CMP does not address certificate of occupancy or certificate of approval. That's helpful. Thank you. Chuck, I had a question about the, uh, the septic evaluation. Um, will there be more people or perhaps less people um, in this change of use um, relying on the septic system that is present there? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the way your regulations are set up is that we estimate and calculate wastewater flow rates based upon a regulation of the Department of Environmental Protection. That regulation assigns flow rates to different types of uses. So for okay. example, a school flow rates are assigned based on the number of children, the number of teachers, cafeterias, and showers. Uh, as opposed to when an office is proposed, that regulation typically assigns a flow rate per square foot of building. So in, in this instance, it's 0.125 gallons per day per square foot for the 9,000 uh, square foot portion of the building. So flow rates are assigned uh, by a cross-reference in the commission's regulations to DEP's regulations based upon the, the different types of uses that are proposed. Uh, I think it's safe to say, although this isn't really a factor at the moment in our calculations no, that yeah. there were more students in the school than there are going to be office workers. 
what, when the school was at full occupancy. Did I answer your question? You did. And, and so the uh, septic system is more than adequate um, to um, address the needs of this building under the change of use. Yes, and I should also note there are other safeguards in place. For example, in this instance, uh, the Burlington County Health Department uh, would typically be responsible uh, for ensuring that the actual physical septic system itself has adequate capacity. And in the case of a state agency, it, it may be that the Department of Environmental Protection has some responsibility in that regard too. Will they have any labs in, in this facility or, I mean, I, I assume that it's just office space, but um, will there be labs uh, that would be considered offices? Um, we did not ask the question of specifically of whether there will be labs in it. It is primarily office space. Uh, we're not aware that it's going to have labs in it. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay. All in favor of approving the resolution, say aye. 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 Anybody, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, please call in now to participate in public comment on applications where the record is not closed. There are seven, seven applications that the public can comment on at this time. They include an application from Monroe Township for the construction of a 4,550 square foot addition to a municipal firehouse in Monroe Township, an application from Atlantic Cape Community College for the construction of a baseball field and associated development in Hamilton Township, an application from Atlantic County for facilities management improvements to the Atlantic County Lake Lenape Park in Hamilton Township, an application from Shelterwood Forest Managers on behalf of Ocean County for the creation of a 152-acre forest fire fuel break in Manchester Township, an application from Ocean County for the construction of a salt storage dome and three storage buildings at an Ocean County maintenance facility, an application um, from Washington Township for um, New Jersey Division of Property Management and Construction's construction of a 2,400 square foot New Jersey DEP storage building uh, in Washington Township. And lastly, an application from the Borough of Medford Lakes for the construction of a walking path and dock at Medford Lakes Municipal Office Medford Lakes Borough. Um, Ms. Lynch, do we have any callers um, for comment at this time? No, sir. Okay, boy, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Seven applications. Any, any callers at this point, uh, yes, Jessica? Sir, um, no, we don't. Okay. Uh, I'm now closing public comment. I would like to thank those that commented on these applications today. Uh, they didn't. Uh, the public can also comment on the applications through email by the end of the day. So thank you. Okay. Um, master plans and ordinances where the ED has Financial issue findings, uh, Shenmong Township Ordinances 2020-04 and 2020-06. And uh, both those ordinances um, from Shenmong Township, one has to do with solar systems and the other has to do with uh, maximum square footage for private garages, carports, and accessory buildings. Uh, description is in, in the packet. Okay, now for uh, general public comment. 
please call in now to participate in public comment. The phone number and identification code can be found on the screen at the top of the agenda. So while we're waiting for general comment commenters, uh, I'd like to ask the executive director, do we have a need today to go into closed session? We do not. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jessica, is there any, um, anybody on the phone? No, sir. Well, I hope everybody um, has been able to um, survive um, the results of the last uh, hurricane, hour out outages and flooding and all that horrible, horrible experience. Um, I think that's what the second um, tropical storm we faced. Um, and uh, I understand most of us lost electricity for quite a period of time. And uh, perhaps commenters um, certainly had the same problems as we did as, uh, as uh, working for the, for the commission. Uh, commissioner, do you have anything you'd like to say at this time? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Alan. Yes, yes Alan. Um, as the commission will recall, there's an, a requirement in our bylaws to do an annual evaluation of the executive director. Uh, okay. That is probably a little past due, but I would blame that on the COVID situation. We haven't met in person in quite some time. Uh, in response to some of the comments by the commissioners about last year's process in terms of the form, I asked uh, Zabeda Concepcion to draft a new evalu evaluation form. That's been prepared. The executive director has prepared the report that she provides to the commission. Um, I anticipate, unless I hear differently from Nancy, that those documents will go out to all commissioners next week. Uh, I don't know that there's a need to set a deadline other than the fact that deadlines help in getting a response back so that we can start the process of summarizing and evaluating the, uh, the comments received from commissioners uh, but that is in hand and about to begin. And I wanted to alert all the commissioners uh, to be on the lookout for, I don't know if it'll be an email or a, or a paper document. I prefer a paper document myself. So that would be in the mail, correct? That would be in the mail from the commission, from probably Zabeda. Uh, if, anybody, still... it, if anybody has any concerns with the form, I tried to make the form a little less broad and subjective than in the last one where I think people had difficulty responding. So you could certainly write any comment you want about the performance and it'll be taken into consideration. Thank you, um, Chairman. Chairman of um, Personnel and Budget Committee. Personnel and Budget Committee. Um, we're still on public uh, comment, general public comment. Um, and two okay. people. Two people? Okay. Yes. Ready? Uh, so uh, welcome, two people. I don't know your names yet. Good morning, Cola. Please state your name for the record. Hello, uh, my name is Fred Akers from the Great Ake Harbor Watershed Association. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Commissioners, uh, just a quick comment. Uh, I just wanted to bring up that the Land and Water Conservation Fund has recently been uh, fully funded at $900 million. It's going to be fully funded every year now at that rate. And it's an opportunity for some of that funding to be used in the Pinelands. It has in the past uh, uh, Specifically, there were some state lands preserved around Mayor Run in Hamilton Township. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that and the potential opportunity uh, to preserve some more land with some federal money there. Great. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that news, Fred. Thank you. Thank you. I hope everything's good with you. Yes, things are fine. Hanging in. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, Jessica, next caller. Good morning, Cole. Please state your name for the record. Good morning. This is Ryan Greck from Pinelands Preservation Alliance. Good morning, Good morning. Ryan. 
Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I had just a couple of things this morning. Um, as you may have seen or heard um, at the DEP, there's been a couple of um, personnel changes. Uh, Olivia Glenn, who was the Director of the Division of Parks and Forestry, is now the Deputy Commissioner for Environmental Justice and Equity. So, um, so very exciting that the DEP uh, is is taking that step. But I just wanted to mention that currently the acting director of the Division of Parks and Forestry is Robin Madden, who um, has been with the DEP for a while. And um, I would just like to um, throw out there as a suggestion for the uh, for the commission to invite um, Ms. Madden to come to a future uh, Pilots Commission meeting and just to um, talk a little bit about her vision and her capacity as acting director and um, on how best the DEP, Parks and Forestry Department, and uh, the Pilots Commission can work together. So um, just a, a thought there. And then secondly, uh, regarding the uh, accidents, the series of accidents that have occurred related to the construction of the SRL pipeline, uh, as Commissioner Lowebauer said, what has happened over the course of the last two years is not what was presented the Pylons Commission when they approved the SRL. It, I, I will point out that PPA, Sierra Club, and a number of community members did present this possibility, what has ultimately happened, um, but the SRL was, SRL was approved anyway. Sludge cannot be dumped into the wetlands in the Pylons <laughs> you know, continuously, as, as has happened. Um, and the way that we know that these unpermitted discharges were a problem is that after the first two, back in early 2019, there were two IRs in the Pinelands, and at that point, Pinelands Commission staff set up a meeting with New Jersey Natural Gas to discuss this issue. So clearly, staff felt that there was a problem. In the time between when that meeting was set and when the meeting actually occurred, I believe about 10 days went by, there were three more IRs. So then the meeting happened, but clearly there was no, there was no violation issued. There was no field investigation. There was no kind of follow-up. And that meeting was clearly ineffective because then New Jersey Natural Gas turned right around six days later after the meeting, and there was another discharge in the same spot as the first discharge. And again, that first discharge and the second were concerning enough to commission staff that they scheduled a meeting at that point. So, <laughs> so to sort of brush off this pattern of accidents is, comes off as disingenuous as, at best. The Pinelands Commission has a mission and a mandate to protect the Pinelands. And I, I mean, the CMP... I mean, just from NJAC 7,50-6.83a, all develop, quote, all development permitted under this plan shall be designed and carried out so that the quality of surface and groundwater will be protected and maintained, end quote. That clearly didn't happen in the case of the SRL construction within the pylons. Because there was no investigation no field investigation, no follow-up on the remediation that was supposedly done by New Jersey Natural Gas. In, in, their, in their report about the accident that occurred where they discovered the unexploded ordinance, they state in that report that only about 10% of remediation was done, and then they found the ordinance. Was there any follow-up to find out if there, the remaining 90% of the cleanup was ever done? I, I certainly haven't found any evidence of that with my OPA request. So, there, the fact that the, the mandated responsibility of the Pilots Commission was not completed in early 2019, there were subsequent inadvertent returns in, along the construction route. That may have been outside the Pilots, but <laughs> they may have been prevented had the agency responded in an appropriate and timely manner. And had the public known about these accidents, perhaps 
a stay request would not have been moot. If we had been given the option to make that request at the time when their construction was taking place within the pilots. Uh, you know, I, we, of course, we can never, we can never know what would have happened had there been an appropriate response at the time that these accidents were taking place within the pines. But a woman has lost her home in Upper Freehold Township. Barbara Fox Cooper still is in negotiations with New Jersey Natural Gas. She's had to hire a lawyer. She is living in a temporary dwelling where she doesn't have internet access. She's a, a, she's a, a senior citizen. She has, her entire life has been turned upside down. And, you know, that hers wasn't the only accident that took place after they left the Pines. There have been a series of others. So I, I hope the commission feels the full weight of responsibility and, and seriousness as what has happened over the course of this construction. I'll end my comments there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. All right, Jessica, are there any other callers? Any other comments? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, before we close uh, public uh, comment, I just mentioned that uh, August 28, um, 2020, the P&I committee meeting will be held. Um, and uh, September 11, 2020, is the next commission meeting. Um, any any commenters at this point? No, sir. I'm sorry? No, sir. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Sure. Uh, I'm now going to close public comment. On behalf of the commission, I would like to thank the public for participating in and watching the meeting today. And just to remind uh, those interested in the applications that uh, the seven applications that were presented today for public comment, um, you, the public can still comment on those applications uh, today. Um, and uh, I hope, hope they will do so. Okay, thank you, Jessica Lynch, for uh, coordinating phone calls today and also your efforts in making sure these meetings go smoothly. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, final comments. Um, Executive Director. Have, uh, Nancy, do you have any final comments? Nope, I'm good. Any staff members? Uh, anything? Okay. Uh, commissioner comments. Uh, commissioner Lobauer, I see you up in the corner of my screen. So. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get the bit here. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes. Commissioner Avery presented the, uh, you know, noted that we had received the uh, story uh, about the impoundment of uh, ATVs. And I wanted to take this opportunity to thank the uh, conservation police officers of the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife uh, Department, because I, I think that uh, this was an important measure uh, that some of us have been calling for for some time uh, as a way to show uh, how serious we are at dealing with off-road vehicles. And I also uh, want to note uh, for the commissioners that um, Al Horner, who is a, a frequent uh, uh, you know, visitor to our meetings, a uh, member of the public who's spoken uh, to us in the past on this subject, uh, posted something, posted a message about this impoundment event uh, on social media. And, and if I may, I'd like to read his comment into our record because I think it's, it's so important. Uh, so this is Mr. Horner's post. Recently, New Jersey Fish and Wildlife's conservation police officers from the central region focused their patrol efforts on illegal off-road vehicle use in Greenwood Forest Wildlife Management Area. On Saturday, July 25th, two ATV riders attempted to flee from the officers. Once they were apprehended, the riders received summonses for criminal obstruction, interference with the duties of a conservation police officer, and wildlife management area use violations. The two ATVs were impounded. On Sunday, July 26, a large group of ATV and dirt bike riders from Northern New Jersey ignored the numerous no ATV signs posted in the area known as clay holes. In addition to violations for operating off-road vehicles and operating unregistered vehicles on the WMA, 
officers issued summonses for swimming, possession of alcohol, and entering a restricted area. 13 ATVs and dirt bikes were impounded. Their owners are facing fines starting at $274 and impound towing and storage fees of at least $300. Off-road vehicle enthusiasts are reminded that only registered, insured, street legal vehicles are permitted in the wildlife management area. Vehicles may only be operated on established roads and parking areas. I'd like to thank Mr. Horner for posting that message and helping get the word out uh, to ATV operators that we are serious about uh, protecting and preserving uh, these public areas uh, from violation by these vehicles. And again, uh, thanks and kudos to the conservation police officers who made these arrests. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Bovellan. Uh, Commissioner Eirich, do you have any comments today? Um, Commissioner Christie? Uh, no Commissioner Thank Avery? No further comments, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> yeah, you said a lot today. It's all good. All good stuff. Uh, Commissioner Erland? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. I wanted to um, uh, chime in. I can't hold my tongue. I apologize. The uh, the comments from the last public comment, I think, um, I, I think, went over the line. Uh, to infer that our staff um, had something to do with, or, or is to blame, for some of these inadv these inadvertent returns uh, and potentially damage to people's homes, I think is reckless and and, and potentially even slanderous to our towards our staff. And I I can't sit here and allow folks to take shots at the staff um, when I'm being told everything I can see, the permit was followed, the conditions of the permits were followed. Um, I just think it's out of line and I can't sit here without uh, chiming in and, and saying something. Um, it, it just unacceptable in my book. I can't sit here without saying anything. So thank you for letting me speak and thank you to staff for, for doing the job that they do. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lloyd. I'll refrain from anything further, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Howe. No, I'm all I'm all set though. Um, I did wanna express my support for what Commissioner Lobauer had said earlier in the meeting about the inadvertent return issue. Uh, he and I had spoken about uh, just the shock that learning about all these things that happened so much later after the fact was um, for me, you know, I understand we didn't know about it, but but it seems weird to not have known about it too. And I, and I sort of echo what his comments were earlier about my concern over this whole entire uh, side effect of, of the pipeline construction process. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Howe. Uh, Commissioner Pickaliski. Uh, no further comment. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, just uh, like to say that uh, it's not easy being an executive director. Um, and uh, I'd just like to express my appreciation to Nancy for uh, leading the Finance Commission through extraordinary times of the pandemic and storms disrupting our lives and still keeping the operations of the commission intact. Um, I think the commission really appreciates that. And I'd also like to thank staff working at home through all the difficulties, all the distractions from um, keeping their work, um, doing a good job with their, their work. Um, I just uh, so much appreciate, on behalf of the commission, appreciate all the efforts that staff puts forth. So, um, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move, Chairman. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? I second. couldn't hear the second. Second, Dan, Chris. Oh. Dan, thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Everybody take care. Be safe. Hopefully there will be no more storms. See you next time. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.